الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سميهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Respected brothers, elders, sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I thought today, inshallah, we will uh, speak about something which is currently trending. <laughs> By the grace of Allah, it ain't trending too much around here. But in certain parts of the world, it is trending big time. And that is uh, Corona. And may Allah protect us all. And I wanted to give the Islamic perspective on illnesses, on viruses, etc., and plagues. As far as illnesses are concerned, they are a very good way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purging a believer of his sins. And this is why sometimes you look and you see an individual and he's really unwell. And you really feel sorry for that person. But if that person is doing sabr, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sins are being forgiven. And not only are his sins being forgiven, his status is being elevated in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why many people who will have good health in this dunya, but will have not utilized the health for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be far behind those who are unwell in this dunya, and every moment they were unwell, they did sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated their status and forgave their sins. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a very beautiful narration, he said, he said, sometimes Allah has a particular station for a believer. So he has this station for a believer and he wants to give this station to this believer in Jannah. But the problem is that this person doesn't have enough good actions. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I won't even use the word afflicts him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his case gives him the blessing of illness. So he can attain his status in Jannah. Because his actions are not enough. So, the way a believer looks at everything around us is in a positive manner. That even if a person is ill, it's a blessing. The Prophet ﷺ said, if a person falls ill, or he is in suffer. So, if you fall ill or you're in suffer, and now you cannot do your actions like you used to do before for your ibadah. So you can't go to the masjid. You can't read as much Quran because you're traveling or you're doing something else like you're unwell. The Prophet ﷺ said, even then, even then, Allah will write all those actions that he used to do in good health. Even if he's on his bed. If 50 years you spend on your bed, but the action that you used to do before, Allah will write those every single day without you even doing them. So this is why sometimes, subhanAllah, we look at things through the lenses of the dunya, but when you look at it through the lenses of the akhirah, you realize that's totally different. Allah is forgiving this individual and He's elevating His status. Now, coming on to illnesses and types of illnesses, the Prophet sallallahu said, La adwa fil Islam. The word adwa means that there is no contagious diseases in Islam. No disease is transmitted from one person to the other. And people just take this narration without actually focusing on the other narrations and don't really understand what this narration means. Here, the Prophet ﷺ was cleansing the people of the belief that any, belief, any illness comes from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger of Allah was showing that, look, really, 
the musabbib al-awwal, the original source of any illness is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was sorting people's aqeedah out. That believe that really illness comes from only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good and bad, harm and khair only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet said, La adwa fil Islam, there is no transmitted illnesses in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you take this narration in isolation and you don't take it with the others, you won't understand what the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually meant. Because in other narrations, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he says, Fir min al majzum, run away from a person who has leprosy. Firaraka min al asad, like you would run away from a, per, from a lion. Now, if you are meant to run away from contagious diseases, then next time you see a person sneezing, you run away from him. No. Because if you take the narration literally, then anybody who's got a common flu, you should be running away from. Run away from a madzoom. The Prophet wasallam said, don't enter a place which has ta'oon. Ta'oon is a plague. So how do we understand contagious diseases in the parameters of Islam? Okay. See, if a contagious disease is such a disease which can possibly take your life or have a long-term illness, then you remain away from that. If it can damage your life, like for the coronavirus, they say there's a possibility, possibility, worst case scenario, that 80% of the residents of the UK will end up with the coronavirus and 1% will be fatalities. That's about maybe 800,000 people will die. Yeah. <laughs> worst case scenario, don't get freaked out. Yeah. But there's, there's worst case scenario. So what about these kind of illnesses? What about plagues and things like coronaviruses and these which are transmitted, not only transmitted, that they take life? Well, how does a believer react to this? Aisha radiallahu anha asked the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa regarding the ta'oon, the plague. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is an adhab from Allah, whoever Allah wants to afflict. It is a punishment from Allah, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to afflict it with. But then he said, it is a rahma, rahmatan lil mu'mineen. Allah has made it a rahma for the believers. So adhab for one group of people and a rahma from another group of people, but on the condition. On the condition that that person has sabr and he does not leave his vicinity. He has sabr and he does not leave his vicinity and he knows that whatever has afflicted him is that which Allah has already written down for him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if he does these two things, what is it? That he doesn't leave his vicinity, he doesn't leave his vicinity, and he does sabr, and he knows that whatever has afflicted him, meaning what? He doesn't say, oh no, why did I come here? You know, I should have left earlier. No, he knows that it was meant to be. And he does sabr on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this person who is afflicted with this plague, and the plague is not just limited to any, just a plague. No, the coronavirus and any such viruses would be regarded the same. The Prophet sallallahu said that he will get the reward of a martyr. Shaheed. The ulama say on this hadith, very interestingly, they say shaheed. If he dies, he will be a shaheed. And they say even if he lives, even if he lives, he will get the reward of a shaheed. Even if he lives, he will get the reward of a shaheed. So, and this is the jeeb and the beautiful thing. 
Why? You die, but you become a shaheed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said in a very beautiful narration there, he said, you know, I marvel at the state of a believer. All his matter is good. You know, everything he said, when I look at the believer, everything about him is good for him. If he is given a favor by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah still rewards him. Allah has given him a favor and he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that favor, Allah rewards him. If Allah afflicts him with a musibah and a difficulty and he does sabr, Allah will reward him. And this is why the Prophet said, if you're in a place where there's a plague, where there's a virus, then remain in there and you will get the reward of a man who stands in the battlefield in front of his enemies. And if you leave that place, if you leave that place, then you are like a man who is on the battlefield and runs away from the enemies. And we know one of the major sins that you can commit in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you're on the battlefield, you leave the battlefield. This is one of the major sins. So why? The question arises. Why can't you enter a place? The Prophet sallallahu forbade a person from entering a place where there is a plague or a, or a virus. Why? Because we are people who look after ourselves. You know, we don't have the, uh, we read one hadith, La adwa fil Islam. There is no transmitted disease in Islam. The hero walks in without understanding all the other narrations. We are people who live in the dunya. Yeah, we have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know we will only get ill if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get ill. We only know that we will get knocked over by a car if only Allah wants us to get knocked over by a car, but then we don't jump in the road and try it. Because Allah said, لا تلقوا بأيديكم إلا تحلقا do not throw yourself into destruction with your own hands. So you don't harm yourself. Secondly, we want well-being. We don't want to be in that position that we enter a place which could possibly harm us. The Prophet sallallahu said, Do not desire, listen, do not desire to meet your enemies in the battlefield. You know, there shouldn't be this, oh, I want to go and fight the enemies. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't, uh, don't want to meet your enemies in the battlefield. Ask for Allah, ask afiyah, ask well-being. But if you happen to meet your enemies in the battlefield, then don't turn away. That is not the desired position. But if you happen to meet your enemies, then you don't turn away. So let me share a very, let me share a pertinent story with you. Umar anhu, in his time of the Khalifat, traveled all the way from Medina to Sham. But whilst he was going towards Sham, when he reached the border of Sham, he got the news that there was a plague in Sham. So Umar anhu, gathered the Sahaba anhum, and he did mashwara with them. He consulted them. What shall we do? Shall we carry on or shall we go back? So a few of them presented him the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that if there's a plague in a place, you don't enter that place. And if you're in that place, you don't leave that place. So Umar anhu now decided that they would go back. So somebody said to Umar, they said, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, atifirru min qadrillah, he said, oh, Amir al are you going to run away from the Qadr of Allah? Meaning, go, go, carry on. If you're destined to become ill and affected by the plague, it's going to happen. Don't go back. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, he said, Naam, nafirru min qadrillah ila qadrillah. We are running away from the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, that Qadr of Allah may be the plague. This Qadr of Allah is that we will be in the state of well-being and afiyah. And we see these precaution in the life of the Messenger of Allah There was a man who came to the Prophet 
there was a whole delegation from Thaqif. And amongst them, there was a man who had leprosy. So they came to give bayah to the Prophet Sallallahu And normally when you give, would give bayah to the Prophet Sallallahu you would give the bayah hand in hand or you would sit next to the Messenger of Allah. When the Messenger of Allah found out amongst them is a man who has leprosy, the Prophet Sallallahu said, tell the man who has leprosy that his bayah is done. His bayah is completed and he can go back. Why? Because why place yourself in that predicament? So, if you are in a place where there is a plague, then you don't leave that place. Why? The ulama mentioned a few reasons, but let me mention two reasons for you. One is because of the fact that if you leave that place where there's a plague and there are other people who cannot leave that place, then their resolve will break. You will break their heart because they cannot leave. And this is why the Prophet wasallam said regarding a person who remains in that place where there is a plague, that he will get the reward of a man who remains in the battlefield fighting. Do you understand? If he left that place, imagine you're in the battlefield and half of you now decide to leave the battlefield. What does it do to the other half? It breaks their resolve. So the Prophet ﷺ said, remain in that place. Because if you leave, you will break the resolve. But the second reason, main reason, is that if you are in a place of plague or a virus or something similar, and you happen to leave that place and go to another place, then you're going to spread the plague. So this is why the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him to stay. Now amongst those people who were there in the Ta'awnul Amwas were men like Abu Ubaidat ibn Jarrah, one of the ten who was guaranteed Jannah by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Shirahbil ibn Hasna, Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan. None of them left. None of them left. You know how many people died? In the town of Amwas, in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, they say 30,000 Muslims died in the town of Amwas. But they remained there. Amr ibn As anhu, he took a group of people and he took them to the mountain, the, the top of the mountains. And then he made them into groups, maybe depending upon how well they were. And they remained away from the vicinity until those who were so ill they passed away and some who got better and when they were better they returned but 30,000 people passed away so brothers let's remember one thing that whatever comes it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is our belief that the original source of anything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first thing second thing is that we as believers living in the dunya, we take the asbab, we take the precautions. So we don't go in a place where there's a plague. And if we happen to be in a place of plague, we don't leave that place. What is the reward? We said the shaheed. The reward of a person who is in a place of plague is a shaheed. Let me tell you this amazing narration the Prophet wasallam said. The Prophet ﷺ said, on the day of judgment, those who are martyrs will argue those who died on natural causes, those who were martyred in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will say regarding those who had a plague, Ya Allah, these people are martyrs like us. Those who died on natural causes, will say to Allah, no, 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 Allah, Allah. These guys died on the bed like we did. Like we had kidney failure, like we had a heart attack. They died of a plague, a virus, that was it. They can't get the status of martyrdom, give them the R status. So generally when a person has a plague or virus, he doesn't have wounds. He has internal failure. So Allah will tell the angels, he said to the angels, Oh angels, go and check these individuals. What kind of wounds do they have? Do they have wounds like martyrs? Or do they have wounds like those who died on their beds? 
So the angel will go to those who had a plague and virus and they will check their state. And they will have wounds like those who were martyred on the battlefield. Not only that, their wounds will be dripping of blood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give those who died of a plague, who died of a virus, He will give them the status in the Akhir of the Shuhada. So let's remember, brothers, elders, that this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't really get too freaked out. We carry on with our day-to-day life. And that's because we believe that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa inna lillahi wa inna li raji'oon. That everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when you look at things through the lenses of the akhirah, it makes things a lot better. You look at sicknesses and you look at plagues. And you look at subhanallah, if a person is afflicted with a plague or a sickness or an illness or a virus like the coronavirus and he passes away in the eyes of Allah, he becomes a shaheed. And if you only look at it from the dunya we lens, then it's bad. Then there's no hope. This is why in life, look at things through the lenses of the akhirah and major issues become trivial and if you look through at things through the eyes of the dunya the dunya we lens then minor insignificant things seem like a mountain so we make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all in good health and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah that whoever is afflicted by this it is a rahmah for him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shuhada the, the status of a shaheed barakallahu feekum zaakum allah khayr assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah